Okay, see. Um, my name is Christopher Lewis from the Pueblo of Zuni. Um, uh, member of the Badger Clan, child to the corn. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, doing some uh, unique uh, basketry, um, discussing some different uh, styles, techniques uh, um, that I use, the tools. Uh, today we're going to um, <clears throat> Uh, talk about, demonstrate uh, some uh, things with um, narrow leaf yucca. In the wild, it's a nice looking plant, but fairly deadly if you're not used to working with it. <laughs> this one's uh, kind of cleaned up so it doesn't look too bad. Uh, before we get started, uh, when you get a plant, uh, you know, we uh, uh, go out, we uh, uh, give our prayers, our offerings to, to, the, uh, to one of them to, to continue going for us to keep using. Um, afterwards, uh, uh, all of these plants we gather are not collected with any um, modern tools. We don't use uh, uh, knives, axes, picks, shovels. To collect, we uh, do it all by hand. We just take um, the the each leaf and have to separate it from the base. We have to find out how they lay. After getting this all taken apart with what we need, we have to um, go back and clean all of these leaves by hand all the way down. Because if you try and weave with these little things in, they're like um, uh, needles that will stick in your, your hands, your fingers. And they have um, like a cactus spine, they have barbs on them. So when you try to pull them out, they'll keep breaking. And any pressure you put on it, it um, causes a lot of pain. What we're gonna, uh, what I'm going to um, be working on today is a, a pot rest, a plated pot rest. Um, this kind of looks a little off, a little wonky, but it's the very first one I made. This is the one that has all my knowledge in it. So, um, and this smaller one, this particular one. Uh, is a family piece and it's probably around 80 years old. Uh, history of pot rest go, goes back to uh, basket maker time, several thousand years. Uh, in, the, um, in the beginning, you, you found, uh, in the collections I look at with Cedar Mesa perishables, uh, we see a lot of pot rests. Uh, a lot of them we see are just, um, uh, rings of um, juniper bark tied with uh, yucca or um, juniper bark uh, wrapped with yucca. Uh, this type of um, pot rest or pot ring was, um, uh, you see a lot, but then they would attach this to the bottom of the pot and build a yucca harness up the side of the pot so it was attached to the pot itself. So you see a lot of these ones. It takes a while to clean and process the, the yucca to get it ready. So I already have uh, some of my yucca already done here. And this, uh, this style I'm gonna do um, was something typically done in Zuni about uh, hundred years ago where they took that very thin uh, strip off the um, uh, back of the yucca, the center. So and it's just ba uh, a basic um, plating technique of uh, um, uh, weaving it. For me, the hard part of um, doing this is keeping the 
the tension on it, the finger strength, the hand strength that's required to, to um, continue doing this and keeping that constant pressure on it. Do we need a permit to pick this plant? Uh, I'm not sure about if this, if, where you pick it, the plant from, but um, normally I pick all of my um, yucca on the reservation. So um, for uh, cultural things, we are allowed to pick um, plants and stuff. So you would have to check um, with the, the different agencies uh, in, in, in the area you live in to uh, what you would be able to pick. Like if I was coming here and uh, I didn't uh, bring the plant from home, I don't know, I wouldn't try picking yucca in Arizona because I won't know whose property I might be going on or the tribe, tribe if it's another tr uh, tribe I'm visiting. You always have to be mindful about different things like that um, as a guest. Uh, but yeah, so normally I pick all of my plants, um, yucca, willow, um, only thing, only plant I do pick uh, out of state uh, um, is uh, sumac. But the the thing with sumac is um, the 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 place I get my sumac from for the coil basket tree is um, it's uh, from a lady's house. She planted it and. Uh, wanted it pruned, and I gladly said I would because I needed the sumac. Mm -hmm. So I'll drive, we'll drive uh, four hours for me to go prune a sumac bush. And some of our viewers are just joining in. Can you show the full yucca plant if you're able to? Uh, yeah. How old were you when you started weaving? Uh, Good question. <laughs> um, I will say uh, that it's uh, been about 15 years that I've uh, been weaving. Um, uh, um, the, the, the number of people in Zuni that were doing any type of weaving basketry uh, was maybe about three people. All of our basketry knowledge um, had been lost in bits and pieces um, and um, through a grant I was uh, able to, uh, well I was selected to uh, learn some basketry techniques and stuff and uh, that uh, uh, led to me uh, learning different techniques that uh, I could bring back to the village and, um, and start to revive our basketry. Uh, and I've worked at it for 15 years now. Uh, about 11 years ago, uh, 11, 12 years ago, I started the uh, um, basket we were skilled in Zuni, uh, letting, uh, getting uh, different people interested in it, uh, going out and harvesting, processing, learning the different techniques, which led to us uh, working with um, Jim Inote and uh, Curtis Kwam at the Ashiwawa Museum in Zuni. And one of the things um, Curtis had was a broken drum base that was found in the village. He brought that up from storage and you know, he told me, Chris, you're gonna get a kick out of this. Look at this. And he put it on the table. I opened up the box, moved the tissue paper, took one look at it and said, I'll be right back. I went home and got my dental tools, gloves, came back. And I studied that thing for a couple hours. The thing was, we were having a work session. So my colleagues were there weaving, working on different things. And I sat with that drum bass 
trying different things, trying different things, and I got it. I made, I made, this was the first one I made by studying that broken drum bass. From this, all the ladies in there were all saying thank you, thank you, you know, acknowledging that the ancestors didn't want it lost and that they gave that knowledge to me to, to uh, learn it. Uh, so that's, that's where I learned how to, to weave the style I weave. Now I know the, the one person that was left weaving them has a totally uh, unique, different and unique way of weaving his pot rest. Um, there's, a, there's another individual that I know who weaves them. He weaves them in a different manner. Um, I don't, and they all come out looking the same. You, uh, you can't tell uh, how they're woven unless you actually sit and watch the weaver mm -hmm. and learn, learn that person's style of, of weaving. <clears throat> uh, that's the unique part of these. There's no right or wrong way to say that um, it's being done this way or that way. Now, someone asked, uh, do you use all natural materials or do you use a metal uh, to close the baskets, to close the rings? Uh, on my, my, my yucca baskets, um, sometimes, uh, if I'm not um, being, uh, not, not being a, a replica piece, I will use a, a metal ring, but uh, if um, it's a, a replica basket, uh, then I will use a, a wooden ring. Um, a lot of the times I will use, um, for smaller baskets, I will use um, uh, I will use the um, willow rings. I'll go out and cut willow and make um, the rings with them. Uh, the largest ring I make out of willow uh, is probably around a 14-inch basket. Uh, after 14 inches, for it to be uh, sturdy and durable, uh, then it would be uh, out of um, oak mm -hmm. to, to um, continue uh, to make the, the bigger baskets to uh, hold up. Um, so once in a while, if it's a contemporary piece or um, something a little different, I will use a, a metal ring on uh, the baskets. Uh, for a plated pot rest, there's no ring involved. It's all just uh, yucca. And you spoke of uh, sumac earlier. What's its use? Uh, sumac, um, the, the bark, uh, like I said, um, uh, juniper bark or um, uh, shredded yucca, uh, the bark is taken off and wrapped like this uh, yucca here. The whole thing would just be uh, sumac or service berry uh, uh, bark used to wrap the out, outside of the, the, uh, the uh, juniper bark. Uh, the, the inside part of the um, uh, sumac is uh, split into uh, small weavers and uh, is used for the stitching material on uh, uh, a coil basket. This is all uh, uh, sumac here uh, that I processed and uh, started this basket with. As a, as a beginner and not having anyone to uh, teach me as a self-learner, you can see all the split stitches in this. And, and, um, it was mainly just to, to see if I could process and start a, start a basket. So, but uh, sumac basketry started, uh, died out a long time ago in Zuni. Um, 
And one of the things I always say about, about how we lost basketry is that I think it, uh, we started losing it um, due to uh, Spanish influence. Uh, when the Spanish were here, they set, they set restrictions on people and we had a boundary of uh, one mile. The village sat in the middle, so half a mile in any direction, you were not allowed to travel past. So that, that uh, the sumac grows in the higher, higher altitudes, so that was further than the, the one mile limit. So I think that's when we started losing a lot of um, some of our uh, weaving technologies and stuff because of the restrictions of travel and being able to obtain um, the different uh, plant materials. And we got another viewer asking, uh, do you use all natural colors or store-bought if you color your, your items? Uh, right now it's a lot of um, uh, store-bought, but I do do some vegetable dyeing. Um, uh, it's just the, uh, the process of it, um, uh, trying to get the colors uh, um, uh, dark enough to, to uh, stay and last on basketry. But a lot of um, prehistoric baskets uh, aren't, um, that I've, I've been uh, doing aren't um, color dyed. And are the edges of the stems uh, sharp? Is there any worry of you cutting your fingers? Um, no, because um, when you take the leaves off, uh, you have to pull, um, like I was showing earlier, you have to pull all of the, the uh, clean the edges all the way off, uh, like this to, to get everything off uh, all the way down. So, there, um, not uh, anything sharp on the edges so to clean them off. And we got another viewer asking, um, is there any medicinal properties of the plant used by the Zuni people? Uh, medicinal, not that I know of, unless you're into chewing on vile, nasty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the yucca itself, um, when uh, uh, the yucca itself can be processed into um, string, if you roast it or boil it for hours, um, you can process it into, uh, uh, once it's cooked, you can um, uh, take your, your, your cooked or boiled uh, yucca and uh, your uh, spatula or um, scraper and clean off all of the, the flesh, the epidermis and the flesh until you're left with um, uh, nice fibers, um, which then you can um, uh, spin and twist on your, uh, uh, your thigh. Um, that's where a lot of the, the cordage comes from. Talking earlier, I was talking about um, the um, prehistoric style baskets. Um, this is one uh, that I was working on last night. I didn't get to finish it. But uh, prehistoric baskets were solid on the inside. Um, kind of hard to pick out the designs until you turn it over, then you have the lines that give you the contrast. Um, this one uh, snakes back and forth over the whole basket. But this, this style, of, uh, prehistoric style of basket, the replica baskets, this is kind of what um, the type of work Zunis were making. Uh, the last known baskets made in Zuni were around the 1920s by uh, school kids at the day school, the girls. 
So it was this style of basket that they were, they were make, making. They weren't splitting the whole yucca all the way through. And all, the split sides were always on the bottom and the uh, unsplit sides were on the inside. Uh, mats and um, plated baskets uh, prehistorically were done uh, this way. So this is just a, a sample of um, showing, showing a um, replica of that basket. And someone's curious, uh, do artists, do Zuni artists ever make uh, wall hangings or fans? Wall hangings or fans? Uh, 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 like, um, basketry? <laughs> uh, can you... How would you? Sort of a vague question, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think wall hangings. Um, I don't know why something different is coming to mind. Um, yeah, I guess it could be uh, how, what you would depend on what you, you what um, your co concept of wall hanging is. That would be, I guess, uh, um, Uh, I know there's um, different artists that do different styles of medias and, and things that would make things that would be considered a, a wall hanging. Um, but, uh, I guess baskets you could hang on the wall. Uh, And what other uh, materials or objects can you make other than what you are making now? Um, well, the, the, uh, the, uh, besides the basketry, um, I also do uh, um, textiles, uh, belts, uh, mantas, um, uh, other things like that. Uh, if you look, um, uh, at the t uh, to the left of me, you'll see some of my uh, wicker work. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the willow baskets. Uh, this is all red willow. Um, uh, fruit baskets, bread baskets. Uh, um, Uh, also do trays, uh, plates, platters, all in the um, uh, wicker style. Now, uh, wicker is fairly new to the Southwest. I think it came in about the 1300s, um, just prior to um, the, when the Spanish came. If you look at the um, the large basket in the back, this one here, that's a more traditional type of uh, uh, basket like that. That's um, done done with the um, yucca binding. That's what that's the style that would have been uh, pre-contact. A lot of the back weave, uh, the back woven. Uh, uh, willow baskets with the uh, fancy edging, like all these on the bottom you see are post-contact. That's all uh, European influenced. And what other uh, markets, artist markets, have you participated in other than uh, the museum's annual Zuni festival? Um, markets? Uh, 
the the ones I do annually would be um, uh, uh, let's see. Edge of the Cedars Archaeology Days. Um, that's usually in May. Uh, also, um, Kochiri Feast. Uh, I did do um, Santa Fe, uh, the, the free Indian market a couple of years, and then um, uh, uh, we uh, demonstrate uh, at um, Desert View Watchtower. And Once in a while, Zuni Fair. We don't really do oh, too much. Um, most of what I do is a lot of um, weaving orders, belts, things like that uh, at home and shipping. So that's where uh, I get a lot of that. Now, if I did this completely from the start, it would have been a couple hours just for cleaning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, someone wants to see the inside of the ring. Are you possibly able to show that? I can't see. <laughs> <coughs> and this is this is the hard part. Because once you start you have to the hand strength involved and as you you're going all the way. You can't let go. Once you let go, the whole thing will unravel. Well, we're down to the the wire. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys one of the new new uh, baskets I revived is um, basket about that was made about 850 to 950 years ago. A uh, large number of them were made in Mesa Verde, so uh, we call them Mesa Verde uh, plated ring baskets with a false braid rim. So these baskets uh, have this unique um, braid on there, uh, outside of them. So it's a new, new addition to the things I make. Um, pretty soon, um, the only way you can get this style of basket is by bidding on it at uh, Friends of Cedar Mesa which I am going to make a 12-inch basket for wow. their upcoming auction in April. Because the, the volume of baskets I have to make in this style <laughs> for museums and collectors is a lot. <laughs> All right, Chris, well, any last words? Um, it was great to be here, share my art my craft and knowledge with you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, you all stay safe. Wear your face mask. Use your sanitizer. Because we all need you here. That's right.